ऑडियो बुक साइंस क्लास एट पेज वन चैप्टर वन क्रॉप प्रोडक्शन एंड मैनेजमेंट पहेली एंड बोझो वेन टू देर अंकल्स हाउस ड्यूरिंग द समर वेकेशन देर अंकल इज अ फार्मर वन डे दे सॉ सम टूल्स लाइक खुरपी सिकल शवल प्लाव एटसेट्रा इन द फील्ड चिल्ड्रन वी हैव आवर फ्रेंड बूझो विद अस एंड ही हैज अ क्वेश्चन इन हिज माइंड आई वॉन्ट टू नो वेर एंड हाउ वी यूज दीज टूल्स यू हैव लर्न दैट ऑल लिविंग ऑर्गेनिजम रिक्वायर फूड प्लांट्स कैन मेक देयर फूड दैम सेल्वस कैन यू रिकॉल हाउ ग्रीन प्लांट सिंथसाइज देयर ओन फूड Animals, including humans, cannot make their own food. So, where do animals get their food from? But first of all, why do we have to eat food? You already know that energy from the food is utilized by organisms for carrying out their various body functions, such as digestion, respiration, and excretion. we get our food from plants or animals or both bucho asked since we all need food how can we provide food to a large number of people in our country paheli answered food has to be produced on a large scale in order to provide food for a large population regular production proper management and distribution is necessary 1.1 agricultural practices till 10000 bce people were nomadic they were wandering in groups from place to place in search of food and shelter they ate raw fruits and vegetables and started hunting animals for food later they could cultivate land and produce rice wheat and other food crops thus was born agriculture when plants of the same kind are cultivated at one place on a large scale it is called a crop for example crop of wheat means that all the plants grown in a field are that of wheat you already know that crops are of different types like cereals vegetables and fruits these can be classified on the basis of the season in which they grow India is a vast country the climatic conditions like temperature humidity and rainfall vary from one region to another page 2 accordingly there is a rich variety of crops grown in different parts of the country despite this diversity two broad cropping patterns can be identified these are first kharif crops the crops which are sown in the rainy season are called kharif crops the rainy season in india is generally from june to september paddy maize soya bean groundnut and cotton are kharif crops second rabi crops the crops grown in the winter season october to march are called rabi crops examples of rabi crops are wheat gram pea mustard and linseed besides these pulses and vegetables are grown during summer at many places 1.2 basic practices of crop production bujho questioned Why paddy cannot be grown in the winter season? Paheli answered, "Paddy requires a lot of water. Therefore, it is grown only in the rainy season. Cultivation of crops involves several activities undertaken by farmers over a period of time. You may find that these activities are similar to those carried out by gardener or even by you when you grow ornamental plants in your house. These activities or tasks are referred to as agricultural practices which are first preparation of soil second sowing third adding manure and fertilizers 
Fourth, irrigation. Fifth, protecting from weeds. Sixth, harvesting. And seventh, storage. 1.3. Preparation of Soil The preparation of soil is the first step before growing a crop. One of the most important tasks in agriculture is to turn the soil and loosen it. This allows the roots to penetrate deep into the soil. The loose soil allows the roots to breathe easily even when they go deep into the soil. Why does the loosening of soil allow the roots to breathe easily? The loosened soil helps in the growth of earthworms and microbes present in the soil. These organisms are friends of the farmer since they further turn and loosen the soil and add humus to it. But why the soil needs to be turned and loosened? You have learnt in the previous classes that soil contains minerals, water, air and some living organisms. In addition, dead plants and animals get decomposed by soil organisms. In this way, various nutrients in the dead organisms are released back into the soil. These nutrients are again absorbed by plants. Since only a few centimetres of the top layer of soil supports plant growth, turning and loosening of soil brings the nutrient-rich soil to the top so that plants can use these nutrients. Page 3 Thus, turning and loosening of soil is very important for cultivation of crops. The process of loosening and turning of the soil is called tilling or ploughing. This is done by using a plough. Ploughs are made of wood or iron. If the soil is very dry, it may need watering before ploughing. The ploughed field may have big clumps of soil called crumbs. It is necessary to break these crumbs. Leveling the field is beneficial for sowing as well as for irrigation. Leveling of soil is done with the help of a leveller. Sometimes manure is added to the soil before tilling. This helps in proper mixing of manure with soil. The soil is moistened before sowing. Agricultural Implements before sowing the seeds, it is necessary to break soil clumps to get better yield. This is done with the help of various tools. The main tools used for this purpose are the plough, hoe and cultivator. In figure 1.1a, you can see a plough. Plough is made of a beam, plough shaft and plough share. Plough this is being used since ancient times for tilling the soil, adding fertilizers to the crop, removing the weeds and turning the soil. This is made of wood and is drawn by a pair of bulls or other animals, horses and camels. It contains a strong triangular iron strip called plowshare. The main part of the plow is a long log of wood which is called a plow shaft. There is a handle at one end of the shaft. The other end is attached to a beam which is placed on the bull's necks. One pair of bulls and a man can easily operate the plough as shown in figure 1.1a. The indigenous wooden plough is increasingly being replaced by iron ploughs nowadays. Ho. Oh. It is a simple tool which is used for removing weeds and for loosening the soil. It has a long rod of wood or iron. A strong, broad and bent plate of iron is fixed to one of its ends and works like a blade. It is pulled by animals. Figure 1.1b Page 4 Figure 1.1b A hoe a hoe has a grip, a handle, beam, bent plate and a rod. Cultivator Nowadays, 
ploughing is done by tractor driven cultivator the use of cultivator saves labor and time as shown in figure 1.1c figure 1.1c in this figure we have a cultivator driven by a tractor 1.4 sowing sowing is an important part of crop production before sowing good quality clean and healthy seeds of a good variety are selected farmers prefer to use seeds which give high yield selection of seeds paheli said one day i saw my mother put some gram seeds in a vessel and pour some water on them after a few minutes some seeds started to float on top i wonder why some seeds float on water activity 1.1 take a beaker and fill half of it with water put a handful of wheat seeds and stir well wait for some time are there seeds which float on water would those be lighter or heavier than those which sink why would they be lighter damaged seeds become hollow and are thus lighter therefore they float on water this is a good method for separating good healthy seeds from the damaged ones before sowing one of the important tasks is to know about the tools used for sowing seeds as shown in figure 1.2a and b traditional tool the tool used traditionally for sowing seeds is shaped like a funnel as shown in figure 1.2a the seeds are filled into the funnel passed down through two or three pipes having sharp ends these ends pierce into the soil and place seeds there figure 1.2a here you can see traditional method of sowing page 5 figure 1.2b a seed drill seed drill nowadays the seed drill as shown in figure 1.2b is used for sowing with the help of tractors this sows the seeds uniformly at equal distance and depth it ensures that seeds get covered by the soil after sowing this protects seeds from being eaten by birds sowing by using a seed drill saves time and labor bujo said there is a nursery near my school i found that little plants were kept in small bags why are they kept like this paheli answered seeds of a few plants such as paddy are first grown in a nursery when they grow into seedlings they are transplanted to the field manually some forest plants and flowering plants are also grown in the nursery appropriate distance between the seeds is necessary to avoid overcrowding of plants this allows plants to get sufficient sunlight nutrients and water from the soil at times a few plants may have to be removed to prevent overcrowding 1.5 adding manure and fertilizers the substances which are added to the soil in the form of nutrients for the healthy growth of plants are called manure and fertilizers bujo had something to say i saw a healthy crop growing in a farm in the neighboring farm the plants were weak why do some plants grow better than others soil supplies mineral nutrients to the crop plants these nutrients are essential for the growth of plants in certain areas farmers grow crop after crop in the same field the field is never left uncultivated or fallow imagine what happens to the nutrients continuous cultivation of crops makes the soil poor in nutrients therefore farmers have to add manure to the fields to replenish the soil with nutrients this process is called manuring improper or insufficient manuring results in weak plants manure is an organic substance obtained from the decomposition of plant or animal wastes farmers dump plant and animal waste in pits at open places and allow it to decompose 
the decomposition is caused by some microorganisms. The decomposed matter is used as organic manure. You have already learnt about vermicomposting in class 6. Page 6 Activity 1.2 Take moong or gram seeds and germinate them. Select three equal sized seedlings. Take three empty glasses or similar vessels. Mark them A, B and C. To glass A, add little amount of soil mixed with a little cow dung manure. In glass B, put the same amount of soil mixed with a little urea. Take the same amount of soil in glass C without adding anything, as shown in figure 1.3a. Now, pour the same amount of water in each glass and plant the seedlings in them. Keep them in a safe place and water them daily. After 7 to 10 days, observe their growth, as shown in figure 1.3b. Figure 1.3a depicts preparation of the experiment. Figure 1.3b shows growing seedlings with manure and fertilizer. Did plants in all the glasses grow at the same pace? Which glass showed better growth of plants? In which glass was the growth fastest? Fertilizers are chemicals which are rich in a particular nutrient. How are they different from manure? Fertilizers are produced in factories. Some examples of fertilizers are urea, ammonium sulphate, superphosphate, potash, NPK, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium. The use of fertilizers has helped farmers to get better yield of crops such as wheat, paddy and maize. But excessive use of fertilizers has made the soil less fertile. Fertilizers have also become a source of water pollution. Therefore, in order to maintain the fertility of the soil, we have to substitute fertilizers with organic manure or leave the field uncultivated, fallow, in between two crops. The use of manure improves soil texture as well as its water retaining capacity. It replenishes the soil with nutrients. Another method of replenishing the soil with nutrients is through crop rotation. This can be done by growing different crops alternately. Earlier, farmers in northern India used to grow legumes as fodder in one season and wheat in the next season. This helped in the replenishment of the soil with nitrogen. Farmers are being encouraged to adopt this practice. In the previous classes, you have learnt about rhizobium bacteria. These are present in the nodules of roots of leguminous plants. They fix atmospheric nitrogen. Page 7 Table 1.1 Differences between fertilizer and manure First, fertilizer is a man-made inorganic salt, while manure is a natural substance obtained by the decomposition of cattle dung and plant residues. Second, fertilizer is prepared in factories whereas manure can be prepared in the fields. Third, fertilizer does not provide any humus to the soil. Manure provides a lot of humus to the soil. Fourth, fertilizers are very rich in plant nutrients like nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium. On the other hand, manure is relatively less rich in plant nutrients. Table 1.1 gives the differences between a fertilizer and manure. Advantages of manure The organic manure is considered better than fertilizers. This is because it enhances the water holding capacity of the soil. It makes the soil porous due to which exchange of gases becomes easy. It increases the number of friendly microbes. It improves the texture of the soil. 1.6 Irrigation 
all living beings need water to live. Water is important for proper growth and development. Water is absorbed by the plant roots. Along with water, minerals and fertilizers are also absorbed. Plants contain nearly 90% water. Water is essential because germination of seeds does not take place under dry conditions. Nutrients dissolved in water are transported to each part of the plant. Water also protects the crop from both frost and hot air currents. To maintain the moisture of the soil for healthy crop growth, fields have to be watered regularly. The supply of water to crops at regular intervals is called irrigation. The time and frequency of irrigation varies from crop to crop, soil to soil and season to season. In summer, the frequency of watering is higher. Why is it so? Could it be due to the increased rate of evaporation of water from the soil and the leaves? Bujo immediately said, I am very careful this year about watering of the plants. Last summer, my plants dried up and died. Sources of Irrigation The sources of water for irrigation are wells, tube wells, ponds, lakes, rivers, dams and canals. Page 8 Traditional Methods of Irrigation the water available in wells, lakes and canals is lifted up by different methods in the different regions for taking it to the fields. Cattle or human labor is used in these methods. So these methods are cheaper but less efficient. The various traditional ways are 1. Moat, pulley system 2. Chain pump 3. Dhekli and 4. Rehet, lever system, as shown in figures 1.4a to d. Pumps are commonly used for lifting water. Diesel, biogas, electricity and solar energy is used to run these pumps. Figure 1.4a, moat. Option, figure 1.4a depicts the working of a moat. In figure 1.4b, we can see how chain pump works. In figure 1.4c, we can see a dhekli. And in figure 1.4d, we can see a rehet. Page 9 Modern Methods of Irrigation Modern methods of irrigation help us to use water economically. The main methods used are as follows. First, sprinkler system. This system is more useful on the uneven land where sufficient water is not available. The perpendicular pipes having rotating nozzles on top are joined to the main pipeline at regular intervals. When water is allowed to flow through the main pipe under pressure with the help of a pump, it escapes from the rotating nozzles. It gets sprinkled on the crop as if it is raining. Sprinkler is very useful for lawns, coffee plantation and several other crops as shown in figure 1.5a. In this figure, we can see a sprinkler system. 2. Drip system In this system, the water falls drop by drop directly near the roots. So, it is called drip system. It is the best technique for watering fruit plants, gardens and trees. Figure 1.5b Water is not wasted at all. It is a boon in regions where availability of water is poor. Figure 1.5b depicts drip system. Page 10 1.7 Protection from Weeds Bujo and Paheli went to a nearby wheat field and saw that there were some other plants in the field growing along with wheat fields. Bujo wondered, have these other plants been planted purposely? In a field, many other undesirable plants may grow naturally along with the crop. 
these undesirable plants are called weeds. The removal of weeds is called weeding. Weeding is necessary since weeds compete with the crop plants for water, nutrients, space and light. Thus, they affect the growth of the crop. Some weeds interfere even in harvesting and may be poisonous for animals and human beings. Farmers adopt many ways to remove weeds and control their growth. Tilling before sowing of crops helps in uprooting and killing of weeds, which may then dry up and get mixed with the soil. The best time for the removal of weeds is before they produce flowers and seeds. The manual removal includes physical removal of weeds by uprooting or cutting them close to the ground from time to time. This is done with the help of a khurpi. A seed drill, as shown in figure 1.2b, is also used to uproot weeds. Weeds are also controlled by using certain chemicals called weedicides, like 2,4-D. These are sprayed in the fields to kill the weeds. They do not damage the crops. The weedicides are diluted with water to the extent required and sprayed in the fields with a sprayer, as shown in figure 1.6. Figure 1.6 shows spraying weedicide. Now, Bujo wondered, Do weedicides have any effect on the person handling the weedicide sprayer? As already mentioned, the weedicides are sprayed during the vegetative growth of weeds before flowering and seed formation. Spraying of weedicides may affect the health of farmers. So they should use these chemicals very carefully. They should cover their nose and mouth with a piece of cloth during spraying of these chemicals. 1.8 Harvesting Harvesting of a crop is an important task. The cutting of crop after it is mature is called harvesting. In harvesting, crops are pulled out or cut close to the ground. It usually takes 3 to 4 months for a cereal crop to mature. Harvesting in our country is either done manually by sickle, please see figure 1.7, or by a machine called harvester. Figure 1.7 shows a sickle. Page 11 in the harvested crop, the grain seeds need to be separated from the chaff. This process is called threshing. This is carried out with the help of a machine called combine, which is in fact a harvester as well as a thresher, as shown in figure 1.8. In figure 1.8, we can see combine. Paheli said, after harvesting, sometimes stubs are left in the field, which are burnt by farmers. Paheli is worried. She knows that it causes pollution. It may also catch fire and damage the crops lying in the fields. Farmers with small holdings of land do the separation of grain and chaff by winnowing. As shown in figure 1.9, you have already studied this in class 6. Figure 1.9 Winnowing machine. Option. In figure 1.9, we can see a winnowing machine. Option. Figure 1.9 depicts winnowing machine. Harvest festivals. After three or four months of hard work, there comes the day of the harvest. The sight of golden fields of standing crop laden with grain fills the hearts of farmers with joy and sense of well-being. The efforts of the past season have borne fruit and it is time to relax and enjoy a little. The period of harvest is thus of great joy and happiness in all parts of India. Men and women celebrate it with great enthusiasm. Special festivals associated with the harvest season are Pongal, Baisakhi, Holi, Diwali, Nabanya and Bihu. 1.9. Storage Storage of produce is an important task. If the harvested grains are to be kept for longer time, they should be safe from moisture, insects, rats and microorganisms. Harvested grains have more moisture. 
if freshly harvested grains seeds are stored without drying they may get spoiled or attacked by organisms making them unfit for use or for germination hence before storing them the grains are properly dried in the sun to reduce the moisture in them this prevents the attack by insect pests bacteria and fungi paheli said I saw my mother putting some dried neem leaves in an iron drum containing wheat. I wonder why. Page twelve. Figure one point ten a shows silos for storage of grains. Figure one point ten b shows storage of grains in gunny bags in granaries. Farmers store grains in jute bags or metallic bins. However. Large scale storage of grains is done in silos and granaries to protect them from pests like rats and insects as shown in figure 1.10a and b Dried neem leaves are used for storing food grains at home for storing large quantities of grains in big godowns specific chemical treatments are required to protect them from pests and microorganisms 1.10 food from animals activity 1.3 make the table as described now there are three columns first column is for serial number second for food and third for sources now complete the table in your notebook one is done for you example serial number 1 food is milk and sources are cow buffalo she goat she camel after completing this table you must have seen that like plants animals also provide us with different kinds of food many people living in the coastal areas consume fish as a major part of their diet In the previous classes you have learnt about the food that we obtain from plants. We have just seen that the process of crop production involves a number of steps like selection of seeds, sowing, etc. Similarly, animals reared at home or in farms have to be provided with proper food, shelter and care. When this is done on a large scale, it is called animal husbandry. Paheli had something to say. Fish is good for health. We get cod liver oil from fish, which is rich in vitamin D. Page thirteen. Keywords: agricultural practices, animal husbandry, crop, fertilizer, granaries, harvesting, irrigation, kharif, manure, plow. rabi seeds silo sowing storage threshing weeds weedicide winnowing what you have learnt in order to provide food to our growing population we need to adopt certain agricultural practices same kind of plants cultivated at a place constitute a crop in india crops can be broadly categorized into two types based on seasons rabi and kharif crops it is necessary to prepare soil by tilling and leveling plows and levelers are used for this purpose sowing of seeds at appropriate depths and distances gives good yield good variety of seeds are sown after selection of healthy seeds Sowing is done by seed drills. Soil needs replenishment and enrichment through the use of organic manure and fertilizers. Use of chemical fertilizers has increased tremendously with the introduction of new crop varieties. Supply of water to crops at appropriate intervals is called irrigation. Weeding involves removal of unwanted and uncultivated plants called weeds. 
Harvesting is the cutting of the mature crop manually or by machines. Separation of the grains from the chaff is called threshing. Proper storage of grains is necessary to protect them from pests and microorganisms. Food is also obtained from animals for which animals are reared. This is called animal husbandry. Exercises Exercise number 1. Select the correct word from the following list and fill in the blanks. Float, water, crop, nutrients, preparation. A. The same kind of plants grown and cultivated on a large scale at a place is called blanks. B. The first step before growing crops is blank of the soil. Page 14. C. Damaged seeds would blank on top of water. D. For growing a crop, sufficient sunlight and blank and blank from the soil are essential. 2. Match items in column A with those in column B. Column A 1. Kharif crops 2. Rabi crops 3. Chemical fertilizers 4. Organic manure Column B A. Food for cattle B. Urea and superphosphate C. Animal excreta Cow dung Urine and plant waste D. Wheat Gram P. E. Paddy and Maize Third Give two examples of each A. Kharif crop B. Rabi crop Fourth Write a paragraph in your own words on each of the following A. Preparation of soil B. Sowing C. Weeding D. Threshing Fifth Explain how fertilizers are different from manure Sixth What is irrigation? Describe two methods of irrigation which conserve water Seventh If wheat is sown in the Kharif season, what would happen? Discuss Eighth Explain how soil gets affected by the continuous plantation of crops in a field. Ninth, what are weeds? How can we control them? Tenth, arrange the following boxes in proper order to make a flowchart of sugarcane crop production. Box number one, sending crop to sugar factory. Box number two, Irrigation Box number 3 Harvesting Box number 4 Sowing Box number 5 Preparation of soil Box number 6 Ploughing the field Box number 7 Manuring Page 15 11th Complete the following word puzzle with the help of clues given below Down First Providing water to the crops. Second, keeping crop grains for a long time under proper conditions. Fifth, certain plants of the same kind grown on a large scale. Across. Third, a machine used for cutting the matured crop. Fourth, a rubby crop that is also one of the pulses. Sixth, a process of separating the grain from chaff. Extended Learning Activities and Projects 1. Sow some seeds in the soil and arrange to water them by drip irrigation. Observe daily. First, do you think it can save water? Second, note the changes in the seed. 2. Collect different types of seeds and put them in small bags. 
label them. 3. Collect pictures of some other agricultural machines and paste them in a file. Write their names and uses. 4. Project work. Visit a farm, nursery or a garden nearby. Gather information about 1. Importance of seed selection 2. Method of irrigation Page 16 Third, Effect of extreme cold and extreme hot weather on the plants 4. Effect of continuous rain on the plants 5. Fertilizers or manure used An example for field trip work Himanshu and his friends were very anxious and curious to go to Thikri village. They went to Shri Jeevan Patel's farmhouse. They had taken bags to collect some seeds and other things. Himanshu Sir Namaskar, I am Himanshu. Here are my friends Mohan, David and Sabiha. We want some information about crops. Please guide us. Shri Patel Namaskar and welcome all of you. What are your queries? Sabiha, when did you start this work and what are the main crops that you grow? Shri Patel, about uh, 75 years ago, my grandfather started this work. The main crops that we grow are wheat, gram, soya bean and moong. David, Sir, can you tell us the difference between traditional and modern agricultural practices? Shri Patel Earlier we used traditional tools like sickle, bullock plough, trowel etc. and depended on rainwater for irrigation. But now we use modern methods of irrigation. We use implements like tractors, cultivators, seed drill and harvester. We get good quality seeds. We carry out soil testing and use manure and fertilizers. New information about agriculture is obtained through radio, TV and other sources. As a result, we are able to get good crops on a large scale. This year, we got 9 to 11 quintals of gram crop per acre and 20 to 25 quintals of wheat per acre. In my opinion, awareness of uh, new technology is important for better crop yield. Mohan Sabiha, come here and see some earthworms. Are they helpful to the farmers? Sabiha Oh Mohan, we learnt about it in class 6. Shri Patel Earthworms turn the soil and loosen it for proper aeration. So they help the farmer. David can we have some seeds of the crops you grow here? They put some seeds, fertilizers and soil sample in the bags. Himanshu Sir, we are thankful to you for making this visit pleasant and for providing useful information. Chapter 1 ends here. Narrator Neeraj Yadav You were just listening to this audio book. Technical Control Bati Langlingdo Technical Assistance Vikas Sangwan Assistance in Production Jagbandhu Jana Direction and Production Vandana Arimardan This audiobook is brought to you by CIET NCERT New Delhi, India